The best of all medicines is resting and fasting. Benjamin Franklin. A little starvation can really do more for the average sick man than can the best medicines and the best doctors. Mark Twain. My religion teaches me that whenever there is distress, which one cannot remove, and one must fast and pray. Mahat Gandhi. Also from Gandhi. The light of the world will illuminate within you when you fast and purify yourself. Obedience, fasting, and prayer are laughed at, yet only through them lies the way to real, true freedom. I cut off my superfluous and unnecessary desires. I subdue my proud and wanton will. Chastise it with obedience and with God's help, I attain freedom of spirit and with it, spiritual joy. That was Dovsieski. Quit playing, start praying. Quit feasting, start fasting. Talk less with men, talk more with God. Listen less to men and listen to the words of God. Skip travel and start travailing. Leonard Ravenhill. And this is all minus one. Welcome, folks. Please, if you like my content, like, share, and subscribe. So today, folks, is going to be kind of more of me just being a talking head here in the uh, in the box. Because um, I want to talk about fasting. Um, and I want to talk about fasting because personally I'm going through a fast right now. I think everyone should fast on a, uh, regular basis daily. And I don't mean just for eight hours. I mean, up to 12 hours a day, you shouldn't be eating beyond 12 hours a day, but, uh, I'm bringing up the subject because man, it's been a stressful year and the year is coming to an end. And now is a great time to take on a fast and discipline your body. Now, I'm in day two, so actually what I'm doing is a modified fast uh, initially, and tomorrow will be a full-on water fast, and then uh, by day, I believe, three, I will be going into a dry fast for 24 to 48 hours, depending on how I feel about it. But a modified fast is uh, would be like a fast that I'm doing with a little bit of calories in it, usually less than... 500 and calories to help me get into ketosis. So yesterday I ate a little bit of, um, I basically had, um, coconut oil and, and, uh, coffee. And with that, I had a little bit of collagen and I've taken a little bit of colostrum in total. I think I had less than 250 calories all day. So nothing that, that big of a deal. I also did drink some bone broth, a few cups of it yesterday. When I come out of the fast, I'm going to do this for six days. On the sixth day, I'm going to start coming out of the fast with things like bone broth again, so that on New Year's Day, when I go to be able to eat with my family, I can eat real food. And um, there's a lot of things to fasting that people, um, people might neglect by just jumping in even though I've done long fasts like this before. And I practiced intermittent fasting for many years. But uh, aside from that, aside from people not knowing what to do and just jumping in, I want to talk about uh, some other things. Things like uh, some announcements that I, uh, with this fast, I'm going to actually fast as much as possible from um, media, from uh, the news. Um, I will still be doing my my uh, show, The Ends Justify the Memes. In fact, tomorrow at, uh, at uh, what, 7 p.m., we're only going to be on for about half an hour, an hour. But tomorrow, Monday, that is uh, December 28th, we will be on with uh, Matt Christensen. And uh, then on Wednesday, we will have uh, our friend Yiz the Eunuch, That'll be at 7 p.m. And then it should be around, I think, 2 or 3 o'clock on Saturday. I, I believe it's 3 o'clock. Uh, we should be on with our friend Kizza GT. So I'm not fasting from that. But I won't be making separate content. And there's a reason for that. Um, it's because that requires me to do a lot of research and getting things ready and rushing around. And I have this, uh, this disorder that 
essentially I chalk up and tell people just for basic parlance uh, uh, that I'm uh, that I'm dealing with insomnia. But what it really is is um, delayed phase sleep disorder. And you can go through and read all this. I'm not going to get into a vast amount of details about it. But uh, essentially, my body just does not want to sleep when um, I am uh, when I am tired, unless it's a certain time of day, and that time of day typically is about four or five a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and I've kind of always been geared this way, uh, unless I'm completely exhausted. And I pretty much go down through the list of diagnostics of everything that you could possibly imagine, and all the problems with maintaining schedules and all this other stuff. Uh, it's a big reason why I've worked night shifts many years of my life. Now. Another reason, again, why I'm fasting and taking this media break, this media fast, um, and, and fasting in my body is to reset my body. And one of the things that you can look at, you can check out, is uh, Dr. Sanchin Panda on time-restricted feeding and its effects on obesity, muscle mass, and heart health. This is uh, Found My Fitness, Dr. Rhonda Patrick's site. If you look over here on the side, there's all kinds of links to his work, but very specifically, I wanted to highlight this. And this is uh, my circadian clock, which is uh, a study you can participate in. I actually did this a few years ago because I have for a long time, about oh, at least 15 years, since 2005-ish, participated in intermittent fasting. Um, since I got into kettlebells and went through the instructor program and all that kind of stuff, there's a guy back in the day, Ori, Ori Hofmeekler, who promoted the idea of um, the warrior diet, which was the precursors to the modern idea of intermittent fasting and frankly folks there's nothing modern about this idea it's been around forever it's just that we have neglected it uh in our lives and that's another reason to take a fast because be because of my lack of sleep and because of me trying to produce work um i've been very stressed and also my my media diet has stressed me out because i kind of am I'm a, a realist, so sometimes I get a little pessimistic. Now, the the my pessimism is off, off, also often offset, <laughs> a mata autopia, as you would. <laughs> it is often offset if um, if I'm delving deeper into my faith, and of course I believe that some of the things that are happening are supposed to happen because of my faith. But it's another reason to fast. Fasting really does break down your ego. And mo removing yourself from the world at times helps you break down your ego. It helps you essentially realize that, you know, I don't need to be following all this stuff all the time. There are more important things. Blah, 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 blah. Right? <laughs> Essentially, you know, sorry guys if I'm all over the place. I'm like, like I said, day two here. So I'll probably be pretty sharp tomorrow or Tuesday. But right now it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where your body has to adapt to it. Um, but what I'm saying here is, is that as your ego breaks down or, or sorry, as your ego builds up, you feel like you have to do certain things or absorb certain information or participate in certain things that may not be good for you. They might very well be toxic. And the whole idea of fasting from food is that your body will burn through these toxins. Now, I'm going to show you real quickly um, a few things that you can reference if you want to get into the details of it. And uh, this is the science of fasting. Find this on YouTube. And of course, over here is a ton of stuff. Jason Fong, by the way, is a great doctor on this stuff. But, um, you know, whatever might pop up, but hopefully, if you look this up on YouTube, The Science of Fasting, you can also watch this on Amazon for free. Um, it, it's an hour-long documentary. It talks about fasting over in uh, the former Soviet Union and in Germany and here in the United States. Guys, fasting has been around forever, and people get really, really weird about it today. Um, so... I, on occasion, will watch Coach Greg Doucette because he's quite entertaining. He's funny. So he's a bodybuilder. And uh, he'll tell people to stop fasting, blah, 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 blah. Well, 
maybe if you're trying to get swole, but if you want to be healthy, folks, sometimes you need to remove things from your life and let your body, let your psyche uh, heal, right? So here is a uh, little video, Fasting, the Most Powerful Ancient Healing Method. And this is a 30-minute video. This is from the universe inside you. Now, the universe inside you is a kind of like esoteric, new agey kind of kind of YouTube page. But I like it because it presents alternate history and facts. And some of the stuff that they have in there is actually true and real. And this is actually a pretty good video that they have. Um, in fact, I might play some of the beginning of both of these for you in a minute. I just want to show you some stuff. What I've learned is a great YouTube channel. He's got over a million subs, over a million and a half. So he doesn't need my uh, my boosting I need his, but in any case, um, he's got a lot of great videos on uh, diet and, and such, as you can probably see here in the playlist. Um, but this is his whole video subscription, his specific playlist. He has a, one on sleeping, talks about certain things with sleeping, one on salt. Um, I used to argue with people about this, the whole idea of reducing their salt is just a terrible, horrible thing for our health. Pretty much anything that the, the medical... The medical industry or the experts or the science has been telling you for the last, I don't know, 50 years, it has been wrong and, and completely antithetical to all of human history. And then, of course, he has this thing about hormones and intermittent fasting and all this other stuff, ketones. Uh, Hunger Explained is great because he goes through this science of, uh, of fasting and what makes people fast. He talks about ghrelin and all of these things that I've delved into over the decades. Um, and specifically, he talks about this guy here, Angus uh, Barberi, who fasted for over a year for 382 days. And he lived only on tea, coffee, soda water. That's not with sugar. That is just carbonated water, uh, vitamins, and um, lived in his home. And every now and again, he, he uh, visited the doctors. And he lost 276 pounds. The guy was huge. Here he is, gigantic, and here he is normal. He also, by the way, didn't have any extra fat layers or folds of fat because his body just reabsorbed that. That's um, that's kind of like, uh, uh, I forget what it's called, but uh, protein repartitioning, I believe is what it is, um, where your body takes certain proteins, protein remodeling, that's what I'm thinking of, and uh, basically puts it in your... Um, puts it where it's needed. The So the extra skin and all that has a lot of collagen and it'll put that in the other tissues where it needs to be. And so he, uh, his weight was recorded at 452 pounds and uh, he stopped fasting when he reached 180 pounds after a year. Uh, results may vary, folks. Uh, ideally, you do a medically supervised fast. Medically supervised fast never go this long. But I'm just saying the power of fasting is um, quite amazing. And this guy, of course, holds the world record for doing so. Um, so real quick, I'm going to talk more in a minute. But let's play the very beginning of this. Life expectancy is increasing in Western countries, but unfortunately... The conditions of modern life cause disease. That's why we have invented the term diseases of civilization. Diabetes, hypertension, obesity, cancer. The number of illnesses is exploding and the consumption of medication as well. The side effects of some of these chemical crutches regularly make news, creating an atmosphere of distrust. If we talk about treatment through medication, I can say that we have now reached an impasse. But maybe there's another therapeutic approach, an ancient method praised by religions but long ignored by science, fasting. In Russia, Germany and the United States, doctors and biologists have already been exploring this possibility for half a century. We wanted to know if it was visible in the laboratory, at the hormonal level. Calorie restriction as an effect, can we make it a lot bigger uh, if we starve the organism? How does fasting work? 
and what kinds of pathology is it useful for? The results are remarkable, especially in the treatment of the disease of the century. This is a new uh, approach to cancer therapy and it's, uh, it's, some people would call it a complementary approach. The results of this work open up unexpected perspectives and indicate a different approach to disease and treatment. All right, so um, essentially, and again, we've known this through uh, ancient wisdom, but we've also known this medically for a long time, the Soviet bloc, that's the first portion of this documentary, has known this for a very long time. They have something like over 10,000 studies. Um, fortunately, I was exposed to a lot of uh, Soviet uh, science, if you would, some of it not science, but uh, a, a lot of Soviet uh, teachings and trainings as a um, young man in my uh, mid twenties because I got into kettlebells and and also uh, Russian martial arts, and um, we don't have most of that stuff translated into English here, and yet they have all kinds of information on it. We tend to discard what the Soviets discovered. Uh, it's the reason why a trainer like Pavel Sasatsulin became so kind of revolutionary because he kind of just took it and he simplified it and he also took what was good over here in the US that things like power lifters and stuff were doing and he combined the methods if you ever read a book like super training uh by Dr. Mel uh Sif uh you you'll see how complicated some of the literature is because it reads like stereo instructions um <laughs> it's also probably one of the best books on um uh, on general uh athletic training that you could find here in the West because it just has all these prescriptions that they, they found in the Soviet bloc. Uh, I'm not praising communism, but it, it, the, there are certain advantages in that they had most things as open source within their own nation. There's also uh, cold therapy, right, that people do, that a lot of that comes out of the Soviet Union. I might talk about that sometime. Uh, Wim Hof, of course, popularized, popularized that here recently. Uh, I've done cold therapy myself for a long time. There's obviously saunas, or saunas, I mean, um, there's there's uh, a vast majority of health things that we just don't do. And here in the United States and in the West in general, we just go about our lives. We're underslept. We're um, overstimulated. Uh, we're, we're overfed. And we get sick and ill. And we start falling apart at a very young age. Now, I'll be 40. I often bring up because I've been bringing it up for the last six months because it's been approaching. But uh, in February, I'll be 40, finally. And, uh, oh. Sorry, folks, couldn't get my coffee out there. Um, I will be turning 40, finally, and I would like to uh, get into better health than I have been in. Um, because life sometimes sneaks up on us. And this is why it's important and good to fast and not just fast from food, but do other forms of fasting. So I'm going to try and do a lot of reading and uh, a lot less, like I said, media exposure, television, that kind of stuff, computers, whatever. At the same time, I am going to be working on the channel. I am going to be setting up, I think, uh, a, a few other things. I did recently set up a locals. I don't have it linked uh, or I don't have it pulled up to have it linked here. But uh, I do have it directly on my YouTube page. If you go there and the banner, in fact, I'll show you where that's at real quick. That's uh, right over here. In fact, I can just hit the button. New tab. And, uh, you know, this is so that we can have our own little community. And, of course, I don't have, to, I don't have it brought up because i got to sign in. But... Uh, in any case, folks, fasting is a very, very helpful thing to do, and you should do it quite often. I, I want to show you some quotes really quick from the early church on uh, what they thought about fasting, how they, they saw it. And by the way, if you are a Christian, most religions practice fasting in one form or another. It's uh, one of the reasons why I brought up Gandhi. Um 
But if you are a Christian, think about this in Matthew chapter 6. He gives you three imperatives to Christian discipline. One of them is prayer. The other one is charity. And the third one is fasting. Guess which one he mentions first? <laughs> All right. So from the early, early church dictionary, as I am fond of using, here from Tobit 12, it says, Prayer is good in fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold, for alms doth deliver from death and shall purge away all sins. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. Alms being charity, folks. And then here from Isaiah. Did I not choose such a fast, says the Lord, but unt untie every bounds of injustice? Part violent, uh, persevere. Let me read this in the, uh, ooh, it's bright. <laughs> part violent pervasiveness of exchange sent out by a free release of ones having been devastated and torn apart every unjust writ break your bread with one's hunger or hungering and bring the homeless poor into your house if you behold one naked clothe him and concerning the members of your family of your seed you shall not disdain them and um, that's actually echoed very much so by Christ, and that's what people miss. The Bible is actually, both the Old and the New Testament, they, they point to each other, and what they point to is Christ. They all go back to Christ. And they say unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, can we, or can ye, can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. So we're talking about here in Luke is the uh, fasting of, of the disciples with the bridegroom. That is, they're, they're with Jesus, now, when they go away, they'll fast more. You wouldn't make people fast during a wedding. That is the metaphor he's given. Here I really like from the Didache. But before the baptism, let the baptizer fast, and the baptized, and whoever else can. But you shall order the baptized to fast one or two days before. So before baptism, this is very important because it, it explains that you can't just baptize children as the custom became later. It was a preparation. Baptism was a commitment. You make a commitment that you are going to be a, a disciple of Christ. It's not willy-nilly. It's not like today where you just come up to an altar call. No, there's discipleship before and then you come up. You should read the DDK. It's a pretty easy read. It's not very thick. Um, again, you can find it online very easily for free. And it was very poignant in that there was a way of life and there was a way of death. And um, it is echoes very much the, the Sermon on the Mount. And then there's some other stuff in there about conducting your life as a Christian and, and, and just ritual kind of stuff. But it says, But let not your fast be with the hypocrites. That would have been uh, the Jews at the time. For they fast on the second and fifth day of the week. That would be Tuesday and uh, Thursday. And rather, fast on the fourth day. That would be Wednesday. And the day of preparation, Friday, which also shows you that many of the early Christians who were Jewish still kept the Sabbath. Uh, they also worshiped on the Lord's Day. It's actually why we have a two-day weekend, folks. So there shouldn't be really any argument over that. And I know there are people out there like the Seventh-day Adventist types who believe that there should be an argument there. But anyways, we can go through all these. Um, they mentioned fasting, almsgiving, um, that's second Clement. That's actually a, a uh, let me read this from Polycarp real, and Clement, because uh, these are actually sermons. Almsgiving, therefore, is a good thing, even as repentance from sin. Fasting is better than prayer. But almsgiving 
them both. Meaning give. Uh, do charity. But fasting is even better than prayer. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know if I'd agree. I think that they're all important. But again, which one was mentioned first by Christ? <laughs> Love covers a multitude of sins, but prayer out of the good conscience delivers from death. Blesses every man that is found full of these. Wherefore, let us forsake the vain doings of many of their false teachings and turn it unto the world which was delivered unto us from the beginning, being sober unto praying and um, consistent in fasting, entreating the all-seeing God with supplications, that he bring us and in, not into temptation. So you see, they're like, uh, as we fast, it makes us weak, and therefore we actually strengthen our resolve and our determination. So according to the Lord said, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And that was Polycarp. This was, Polycarp was a direct disciple of John the Apostle. Um, this is a very clear lineage we, we know about. The soul when poorly treated in the matter of food and drinks is improved. And so Christians, when punished, increase more and more daily. When he's saying poorly treated, again, it's the way the language speaks here. He's saying about when you don't have a lot of food or a lot of drink, your soul actually improves. So punishment, meaning making your life hard <laughs> purposefully with dedication, right? Don't just do it for, you know, without real dedication to it is good for you. It's good for your soul. Every inquiry needs humility. Fast, therefore, and you shall receive what you ask for from the Lord. That's from the Hermes or the shepherd of Hermes, as it's often known. And there's some more quotes here that are longer. I don't need to go through all these. I do want to just play the beginning of this little thing. And then I'm kind of going to get out of here. I'm going to keep it short today, guys. I know I usually go 45 minutes to an hour or more. Um, but again, I just kind of wanted to bring to the point that this, this folks, is the perfect time of the year to fast. You have... Christmas, you spend with your family, you eat, you have a whole week between then and New Year's. Maybe you want to, you know, have a few drinks on New Year's Eve or whatever. That's fine. Break your fast the night before, whatever. Go on a three or four day fast. You don't have to go on a six day one like I am doing. And um, I know there's a lot of Christian tradition that has regularly scheduled fast, but all they're really fasting are certain foods. And so, for instance, in the Catholic faith, you can give up, uh, what is it, during Lent, you can give up, you're supposed to give up meat as a fast, but you, get, you still get to eat fish. Well, no, 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 no. Like, you need to eat less. And of course, meat is more nutritious than generally than most fish, but you could still eat enough fish to get your fill. Truly giving up something is, is something totally different. And so again, like I said, I'm not going to be doing videos this week other than the commitments I have to my live show, um, but I'm not going to be doing prepared videos, prepared work. I will come back. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to talk about the, uh, the plague of Cyprial next week. So be, be uh, ready for that. And of course, I'll have some other stuff because I will be getting back to the news. But again, for my own spiritual sake for my own mental health for my own physical health to fight against my my uh the weakness in my body the things that that plague me like sleeping um you know i'm going to fast and that's going to help me reset my circadian rhythm will i be perfect no probably not i'll probably be going to bed around 2 a.m instead of 4 or 5 a.m or a couple times the other week uh when i was getting to bed at like 9 or later you know, I mean, 9 a.m. in the morning and then getting up and waking up at like one. And um, not it's not good, folks. You need the uh, um, you, you need the the cerebral spinal fluid in your body to flush out. And that only happens when you sleep. And if it doesn't happen, uh, debris and stuff build up in your brain, just like they do in your body, uh, which is why you need sleep. Sleeping is kind of like a fast. You can think of it this way from wakefulness. And this is going to be, um, for me, a fast of many things for the next few days. All ends to get healthy. Taking excessive supplements, following fad diets, 
trying expensive weight loss machines, engaging in excessive exercise, the list is endless. And these countless methods make sense. I mean, let's face it. We live in a world where shiny, quick commercial fixes have far more appeal than good old-fashioned diet and exercise. Despite humanity's preoccupation with food and the multitude of other health gimmicks, the natural world operates quite simply. When an animal is sick, its natural instinct is to refuse to eat. When the crisis is over and healing is accomplished, appetite returns naturally. By the way, my wife has a little dog. Generally, good little dog. Um, very, very mild-mannered. Um, but he's a rescue, so he wasn't the best well-trained. Uh, so doesn't always listen very well. Has a few little issues, but, but generally, like, great dog. And um, he will naturally just not eat when he's feeling sick. And sometimes he won't have, like, digestive issues or whatever, but he just won't eat. Children won't eat when they're sick. But as adults, we force ourselves to do these things. We are going against our instincts, our natural inclinations, ourselves and our bodies. And this is an important point I want to bring up because, again, as a as a person who who believes in uh, the metaphysical world and uh, spiritual life and, and things beyond the flesh, I don't believe that we operate outside of the flesh. That's a Gnostic belief that actually comes from... Uh, Plato or Socrates, really, but Plato said of Socrates and um, the idea that the body could be released or the sorry, the spirit could be released from the body. But you are actually a triune being in the image of God. And just like God, Christ, this past Christmas, we celebrated his birth was the logos, the spoken word and the plan. We also have the ability to rationalize and speak and plan. We are made in his image very importantly in so many ways. And just like he is a triune being, so are we. We are spirit, which is like best I can describe it, our attitude or our energy. We are body, this physical flesh we are in, right? And we are soul, which is largely our mind or our personality. Spirit could also be your emotions, folks. There's a, a mixing of things there. Um. But you have to understand this, that, that we in, in modern society, especially Western society, are so out of touch with this. And there's so many places in the world that it, it would blow their mind the way we live. And it's no wonder why we have so many sick people and so many fat people and so much heart disease and why it has continued to go up as we have continued to, to grain feed our population and our, our IQs have gone down with the takeover of schools from the feds and um, the, the teaching the nation, which is just silly, the government should have nothing to do with teaching anyone about food, but teaching the nation that meat and, those, and fat is bad. And then, of course, our kids have what they call grain brain. They look horrible. They get these big, dark circles under their eyes and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and I mean, I grew up on that kind of stuff, too. I think I would have been a much more robust young man if I had... Uh, eaten a lot more meat instead of uh, a ton of junk food. Anyways, I'll play a little bit more of this. We forget that in most cases, our bodies are extremely efficient at storing energy and in drawing upon those reserves when nourishment is limited or when our energy is focused on healing. So it should be no surprise that the most effective, powerful means of improving our health is also the oldest, simplest, most affordable, and efficient means, fasting. While this wisdom has been known for millennia, it's often overlooked in light of the shiny quick fixes. In fact, if you search fasting, you'll find very little from the medical establishment that is positive. Just the word fad. Which they say with low carb diets, intermittent fasting and everything else, you should really look into these things, folks. Um, again, I'm, I'm giving you great sources here. Uh, Go over to Found My Fitness, Dr. Uh, Sanchin Panda and Time Restricted Feeding. He has probably some of the best science on intermittent fasting. He doesn't call it that. Um, you can participate in his study if you want. I did this some years ago, as I mentioned before. We have this great, just hour-long video talking about the science of fasting. And we're talking about 
all kinds of, of clinical uh, experience and papers. It, it is a great light into things. You can really go down the rabbit hole in all of this. This shorter video, 36 minutes, that beginning there might have sounded hokey, but th this actually has real data in it. Um, like I said, I really love what I've learned. It's a great channel. He doesn't put out stuff very regularly, maybe once a month or so. But, um, you know, the guy does very, very deep research. And it's unlike me, because I don't like to do video editing because it's so tedious. Uh, it's very well edited. Um, and also often concise. And look, he covers sleep, things you may not think of, like why salt consumption is not ideal. Uh, people used to fight wars over salt, folks. Remember, Christ said that you were the salt of the earth. One of the reasons why he said that is not because salt alone makes food a, 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 an enhancer of flavor, but salt is a preservative. You know what else salt does? Back in ancient times, it was used to help with agriculture. It was helped to grow things. And uh, some people have rediscovered this and uh, will tell you that if you plant uh, a, a garden and you use salt in a specific kind of ratio, you actually get better uh, crop production. And I would not lie to you. Again, you can look all this stuff up. And here he talks a lot about intermittent fasting and um, ketogenic diet why calories and hormones aren't this are, 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 are you know calories versus hormones all that kind of stuff and um yeah i'm i've been a big proponent of this idea that calories in calories out is not uh not at all a scientific hypothesis it's a simple simple explanation if i showed you the chart of all all the biological mechanisms that happen in between you would be like oh that's calories in calories out a lot of different things going on there your body tells uh the calories where to go based on hormone signaling and the hormones do so based on the type of macronutrients and also micronutrients micronutrients are very important one of the things i did this morning is i took a vitamin not because i'm necessarily nutrient deficient but just because again i want to slowly break into this fast when i get done with this this is all i'm having today this this coffee i had a little bit about a fourth of it earlier barely sipping on it now, I will have consumed 360 calories for the day. And that will be it. And then by tomorrow evening, I will be going into a dry fast, meaning no water, no nothing for at least 24 hours. Now I've done this before. I know how to do it. Um, but I also today went out on a hike, not a big hike, just in my neighborhood. We got some uh, fields and all, and I walked through the fields. I got a new backpack for Christmas. I loaded it up, got about uh, just under 30 pounds in there and took a two and a half mile walk, you know, and that's good when you're fasting, you need that kind of exercise. Like I said, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go and, uh, and, 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 and fast in other ways as well. I'm going to look at less stuff, uh, from the news this, this week. I'm going to try at least. Uh, get get kind of obsessive about what's going on but but um i'm um i'm just going to kind of try and relax i'm going to try and write a little bit more and you know what i'm going to try and read some books that i've been wanting to get to and finish because i can usually read uh give or take 100 150 pages depending on how it's written how big the font is and all in about eight hours so i'm probably going to do do a lot more reading um, I, I can't necessarily read for eight hours straight. I have to take br some breaks, but I can certainly, and I used to read for eight hours a day. No, no, no problem. Um, but yeah, just a different approach. And this is, again, it's all to get my spiritual health back in line to get my, my psyche up to, uh, to get my, my physical health back in line because, um, I'm, I'm also prone to having seasonal depression and especially with, with my kind of sleep disorder where I'm up late, but a lot of times I don't get a lot of sunlight during or see a lot of sunlight during the winter. Another reason why I took a little, little walk today. So that's, uh, it's just some thoughts I want you to, 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 to know folks, uh, something to maybe consider 
Um, like I said, this is a great time of a year to do it. You should fast regularly. And I mean, on a daily basis, not like 24 hours or, or more or longer, but you should once or twice a year go on these longer fasts. And if you're a Christian and you don't fast, realize that the early church fasted a lot. In fact, some of the stuff, if you read, it almost seems as if they would fast to, to suffer through the fast in order to have food to be, to be able to give to people who had no food at all, who weren't able to work so that they could not eat. And I, I preface it that way is because I phrase it that way because the early church did believe in taking care of the people within their church. And church is a nebulous term, the ecclesia, the people, the body of Christ, um, the folks in the community that were believers that came together. That could very well, in my case, be just your own household. Because I don't like uh, organized, central, centralized religion. And I found few places I, I uh, can come to worship that are um, what I believe to be uh, correct, correct uh, philosophies or correct examination of scriptures and, and beliefs. But that's, that's a personal issue, you know, whatever. Um, but Jesus said, whenever two or three come gather in my name, then I'm amidst you. And, and therefore, uh, as a Christian, I can still be a Christian alone in my family, as well as what though the, the uh, apostle Paul said, don't forsake the ecclesia, the people of the church. And I do that also as well. When I go visit my, my parents and my family, and I see other people. And if you also read about the early church, they went around to people's homes when they couldn't make it out. They couldn't get out because they were sick or whatever reason. They would come to their home and commune with them. That is the point. And uh, much of Christ's Last Supper was about just communing. We call it communion, right? The Eucharist or whatever. It's all mystical. It's really about sitting together and having hospitality with people breaking bread all around the world that's important eating with folks providing food because it's the most basic necessity of life aside from let's say water and if you can discipline yourself for uh, against those things against having to over consume those things then hey um more power to you and i guarantee you, you'll be a better person a more mentally strong person afterwards so with all that said, I did make it about 40 minutes. So, hey, I went a little bit longer than I intended to, but a little rough start for me, I felt like. But, hey, we we, we kept it going. With all that said, guys, this has been All Minus One. Um, you know you can find me, of course. The ends justify the memes. Again, I got to plug this because tomorrow, that is December 28th, Monday, Matt Christensen will be on our show, 7 p.m. Um, we will be live Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we normally are. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, as it states right here in the little description. And uh, we will have our friend Yes the Eunuch on. And then we'll be live again, I believe this Saturday at, at 3 p.m. Uh, with our friend Kizza GT. Of course, you can find me here on YouTube. But more importantly, I have a rumble now. Go over there and subscribe, folks. Build up that rumble because if my YouTube disappears, like it's a little thing. Just get a rumble on your phone. Or your computer, however you watch YouTube. I watch a lot of it on my TV because I have, you know, smart TVs. But get get over there. Get on get on Rumble and just subscribe just in case. Just in case the censorship overlords decide to cut me off for something that I say, even though I try to do nothing but speak absolute truth. Also, of course, the live show ends underscore justify underscore memes. Over on D Live, you can find us there if you don't like YouTube. So, folks, I, uh, I I I hope you all had a very merry Christmas. I hope I could give you some food for thought today. I hope that uh, you will consider participating in, in in fasting more often, and perhaps next year at this time or after Thanksgiving. In fact, the last time I did a big fast like this was after not this year's Thanksgiving, but uh, the the other year after Thanksgiving, and uh, get your system to reset. Let your body do what it does. Let it, it's called autophagy in science. Let it destroy what is bad and come back and build up anew. And uh, 
hey, folks, New Year's is coming up. So have a happy new year if I don't see you until then. And you all be well.